All right, and here we go into the game. Wait, Wait I thought Tama was Protoss. Oh no, he is Protoss. Okay, so Vordy's actually Zerg, he's not Terran. All right, okay, that makes sense. So Vordy will be the white Zerg here at the bottom right, and Father Toss, aka Tama, will be the purple Protoss at the top right. I will just call him Tama for simplicity's sake. Um, yeah, and there we go. So, here we go. It was actually quite interesting last game as well, though, because um, Dewalt definitely had some solid micro there with the probes, like, targeting down Wallace's, uh, Wallace's Zealots. Like, if, if Wallace had just gone for a, a, a one-gate tech opening, I think Dewalt would have been in a pretty good position. Um, with that good micro, but unfortunately could not take down the two gates else. It was like uh, Tama, just going for the normal, the normal forge fast expand. I'm not sure what they're crying about. He's gonna check the the middle here. He's gonna look for an overlord, and he's not gonna see an overlord. So he's gonna go to the bottom right. It's pretty good. It's like oh no overlord here. Uh, he'd probably leave now. So he just, he's making sure he doesn't miss it actually. Sometimes if you leave too quickly, if the overlord takes like a slightly odd path, you cannot you cannot see it. But now he now he can be reasonably certain that the Zerg is at the bottom right. Very rare, I, I think, for Zerg to not uh, to not scout vertically on Circuit Breaker. There was some Zerg actually recently that I saw doing it uh, a lot, doing the the non-conventional scouting pattern. It might have been Gorinich actually. I wonder if it was Gorinich. Might have been. So I remember talking to Cadenza about it. But anyway, we actually have quite a fast gas here from Vorti. That would scare me a lot as Tama. This this usually means the Zerg is up to no good. Like, the most innocent thing that the Zerg could be doing here is getting fast lane speed to deny your scouts. And the most, uh, the most non-innocent thing that he could be doing is just, you know, ling busting you, hydro busting you, all that good jazz. Vorti needs to move this, like, right now, though or he's going to lose his Overlord. I feel like Vordy might actually lose his Overlord, because you can see Tama's actually doing a good job being super annoying with the probe. So Vordy's actually not paying attention. And Okay, now he pays attention. Okay, that's probably fine then. Yeah, and he's moving towards the high ground. The probe could move up here to give his cannons vision, but I think the Overlord will get away here. But that would have been obviously horrendous if he, <laughs> if he just lost that first Overlord to the cannons. And in fact, it didn't even take any damage. So that's pretty nice. So it looks like the fast gas is indeed just for the fast ling speed here. And the question is, what is he doing off the back of this? So earlier today we saw Whistler get a relatively fast ling speed, and he used that basically to go for a uh, five hatch Hydra before lair. Uh, I think that's actually a pretty common thing to do when you go for the, the late lair build, is to get an early ling speed. Um, but he could also, as I said, Use this to hide three hatch hydra. That's actually a lot of zerglings, though. Wait a minute, that's ten zerglings. Did did Thomas see that? He's actually pulled three drone. Uh, sorry, three probes early. So I feel like he actually did see this. So I think Thomas knows. Thomas knows. All right, here we go. Link speed is finished. Is he gonna go in here? Uh, ten links could do it. Mm, he could kill one of these probes and run up, run up the ramp. I think. Uh, he's not sure. He's hesitating. He's just gonna wait. He's got plenty of time. The probes need to just sit here. They can't leave until some zealots come out. That's gonna be a while. And you can see, uh, you can see Vordy's getting his, uh, his third base. Interestingly, Tom actually sent out a, a second probe quite early before the links got here. This is actually a very good move. I, I didn't even notice he did this. But this actually is something that I feel like you almost have to do. If your first probe sees the Zerg getting early link speed, you need to send out the second probe before the Zerglings get to your base, otherwise you will never get another probe scout out, right? Because, like, if, like imagine if he didn't have this probe out, and he tried to send a probe out now, obviously he's not going to go anywhere with Speedlings at the front. But at least here he can see there is a lair, he sees he's not going to get uh, Hydra busted, and, uh, and he should feel pretty safe. Pretty good. And you can see he's, he's still blocking the gaps here, he's still afraid of the speedlings, it's definitely valid. Definitely want to be afraid of those bad boys, because they can ruin your day as a Protoss. 
I got Ling busted on the ladder yesterday. I was not amused. I even scouted it too, but it was on Python. So it's kind of hard to make a wall there. And I kind of didn't really... It didn't really like register in my brain. I didn't respect it enough. So I was like, yeah, I just died. Wow, that's... Very interesting. Do you see this? That is a super early cannon in the main. Wait, when did he make that? This is like the anti-run-by cannon. He made this assuming that Vordy would possibly go for the run-by, and he might not be able to hold it. So he just preemptively made the cannon. I'm not sure about this move. Normally you don't want to do this. In the meantime, it looks like the scanning probe has died, but I think it saw everything it needed to. But but normally you don't you don't want to make this cannon, especially if you're already, you know, you've got probes on the line, you, you know that you're blocking the wall. I mean, I guess 150 minerals is not too big an investment. Um, but, you know, if you were trying to really optimize your gameplay, I don't think you would make this cannon. But that's fine. Just playing for safety here, I guess. Doesn't want to lose to any kind of stupid, stupid run by, stupid all in. And, and, and also remember, you know, um, Tama knows that Vordy got early Ling speed, and he made 10 Zerglings super fast. Which means Vordy's economy was hurt from the early game anyway. So even if he, you know, throws away an extra 150 minerals for this, it's completely fine, I think. Interestingly, he's only got two guys on his main gas. Surely that's not intentional. He's got three on the natural gas. That feels like a mistake to me, but... I mean... I don't know. Not sure. Surely that's a mistake. He's getting additional gateways now. Overlord sees it. He's going for plus one stairs. He's going for some stair zealot action here. <clears throat> Our retro says you can you can always use it to defend against scourge. Yeah, I mean I guess technically later on it will help. And, you know, it can pick off scourge. It can be like some mid game muted defense. But the thing is, investing 150 minerals early is actually a pretty big deal. Bringing away these zealots is also a bit strange. I'm not sure what he hoped to accomplish here. I thought that was a fake move out, actually. I just assumed he wouldn't even just go back home. Was he not going plus one zealots? No, he actually wasn't. Okay, never mind. So he's getting a plus one Sarah's, but he actually wasn't going for Sarah's Zealot. If you're going, if you're going Sarah's Zealot and you throw away those initial uh, zealots like that, that's actually horrendous. That's really bad. But I guess he wasn't doing that. Um, in the meantime, everything looking pretty normal here in the Zerg's base. Three hatch uh, lair. Get some scourge out. Go up to five hatch Hydra. Pretty normal stuff here from uh, from Vordy. Now you can see a third cannon here. I I, I feel like um, Tama could potentially want to add even another cannon or two here uh, because his citadel is relatively late, uh, which obviously means his temple archives is is slightly late. Now he's going to use these corsairs to kind of harass a little bit and keep Vordy back in his base. But I feel like as soon as uh, as soon as Overlord speed finishes, Vordy can run over here. And I'm not sure if High Templars with Storm will actually be ready yet. It's, it'll be quite close if he goes straight over. Uh, although I'm not sure if he will go straight over here with his Hydralisks. So you can see just, uh, just keeping his, his Overlords protected here. Got one Ling just to make sure uh, Tama isn't taking this third base. Oh! Nice connection. <coughs> And there the archive's finished. Is he making the High Templar straight away? He's actually making DTs first. Hmm. I don't know. I, as a Peronos player, I don't know, maybe I've been playing against Condensa too much, but I'm really scared of like the 5 hatch Hydra timing where Zergus comes and hits your front. Like this, this, this is what I'm scared of, right? There's no, there's no Storm now to defend against this. Does he have enough just straight ground units to defend against this? Because the DTs aren't going to help either, because he has Overlord speed. So the Overlord's gonna just come, he's even gonna lose another Corsair here at the front. Oh, he's gonna lose two Corsairs. Oh man, that's actually, that's actually big. It's actually really big. The Corsairs uh, are, or the one Corsair that's left is trying to do something. One DT actually heading down to the third base, but you can see plenty of Overlords and Sunkins there. And now the Hydra Link coming into the front. And this is what I'm talking about. There's three cannons, there are plus one zealots here. That's actually quite a lot of speed lots. Um, but look, Storm Research is only halfway done. He actually is only making his first High Templar right now. And speed lots, they're good, but that's a pretty good amount of Hydralisk. There is a DT there as well. Might want to focus that down first. Yes, indeed, he does take down the DT, but it looks like there are actually enough plus one 
uh, Zealous here, but the Hydras should be able to come back here on the other side of the bridge, uh, you know, stop the Zealous from getting the good surface area. More Hydras on the top side. The Corsair actually gets one of the Overlords here at the front. The other one just, like, randomly ran to the left side. Looks like DT guy uh, took a bit of damage and ran down to the 6 o'clock. Didn't really get anything done. A 6 hatchery is being planted, but it looks like Tama actually is able to hold on just with these speed lots. And so, by the time another attack comes, he should actually have Storm here. So actually, I, I perhaps underestimated the uh, the speed lots a little bit here. The plus one speed lots coming down here. They're trying to run down some more Hydras in the middle of the map. But you can see there's more Hydras out now. And I'm not sure if this is going to go Tama's way. Yeah, he's now getting pushed back. He's trying to take this third base. But I don't think he will be able to. Well, it's actually going to be close. More speed lots coming out. Speed lots are pretty good. Might come down to the micro here from... Uh, from Vordy, he's basically pressuring with something like one control group uh, of Hydralis. He could potentially just right-click on the Nexus. It looks like that's indeed what he's done. He's going to try and force a cancel. He does force the cancel. Corsairs are after. He's going to try and take down these Corsairs as well. But there is the first storm. One Corsair down. Is he going to get the other one? Two Corsairs down. He could even get the High Templar. High Templar is going to fall as well. It's going to cost Vordy all of his Hydralis. But getting the cancel as well as the Corsairs and the High Templar, I think, is a pretty fair exchange right there. But now the question is, what is the follow-up? I don't think the, I don't think he has, a, he's not, he has enough hydras now to continue the pressure. So might potentially want to send some units down to clear out this DT. He's sending the Overlord, but he's not actually sending the units. Does he realize this is here? Oh! Going. So more hydras morphing in the middle, or morphing. More hydras fighting in the middle of the map. He does have lurker aspects now. But wait a minute, now Tama's the one coming out of his base with a good amount of, uh, good amount of units. This is the counterattack. So of course, Vordy did a good job pressuring with his initial Hydras, but did also lose a good amount of those units. He's coming out with more Hydras on the right side. He's trying to split against the Storm. Good splitting there, taking very minimal damage from that Psy Storm, and only one Storm with that army. Again, uh, Tama got his uh, got his Templar Archives relatively late. Looks like he fixed the gas situation in his main, but could potentially get denied this third base yet again here. Hydra Lurker coming in here. Only the single Lurker right now. A High Templar has one storm only. He's got to make it count. The Lurker has a burrow here. I do not see any observers on the field, but two cannons do finish. Can the Hydra just pick off these cannons? They can pick off the cannons. The Lurker could do some serious work right now. He's going to move in. He is going to pick off the cannon. The Lurker is getting into position. He's got a burrow before he gets killed off, and yes, indeed, he does. But a storm is going to finish off this Lurker. You can see on the minimap, Thomas' army is coming back to try and defend this. Is the Nexus going to fall here? He's right-clicked on the Nexus. He's trying to micro it away, and he is going to get the Nexus. Finishes off the Nexus. Vorti, great pressure with these Hydras. We do have a shuttle, a High Templar drop coming in here, but that could be very bad for Thomas actually, if he can't hold on against these Hydras. A lot of Hydras still at the natural. I think he'll be okay. Where's the drop? Oh, the drop actually died. The drop died to Hydra Scourge. I don't think it did anything. I don't think he even got the drop off. Wow, Vordy is actually taking down Tama here in game number three. I had that shuttle selected and it just disappeared, right? I'm pretty sure it just died straight up. Oh man, really unfortunate there for Tama because he's already low on the High Templar count. Really could have used those extra High Templars. It looks like he will at least be able to clear out the units at the front of the natural, I think. Although Hydra's trying to come out here and save their Lurker buddies. But uh, Vordy not really paying too much attention at the front. And there we go. There's the new borrow. Where is the Observer? The first Observer, it seems, is only just now on the way. But the Hydra just trying to be annoying here and stop the third base. So this. Random probe at the top left. Random Overlords is checking the left side here. Looks like... No, it's not a drop. It's just a random Overlord. Okay. And the Observer comes out. Now, the I guess the saving grace for, for Tama is that even though Tama like, got his third denied uh, two or three times already... Um, the Zerg's fourth has also been a little bit late because there was a DT there, remember? So the economy situation should still be quite close. However, Tama is getting Maida at his main base, and he still potentially might lose this. By the way, Tama's trying to double expand. Tama's taking the 12 o'clock as well, but I don't know if he can hold this again. He's got lots of Dragoons, but he's got no High Templars right now. The Zerg army is just going to shred through him 1-0 against 2-0. But there we go, I think he might lose another expansion here. More Hydras are coming out, the Nexus is under attack. Hydras even coming down from the bottom side here. Only Dragoons left, they're even shooting uphill, up this ramp. Oh man, Vordy is actually doing a great job here against Tama. I thought Tama would have the upper hand, to be honest, coming into this game, but Vordy's doing a great job. However, it looks like Tama will be able to hold on to this Nexus just 
fairly. I think if Wardy actually right clicked, he, he could have forced another cancel. A few more random hydras are coming in here. What an intense game this is. This is basically one long fight this entire game. You can see the 12 o'clock Nexus has been taken as well. But now the Zergling's on top of the Nexus. I think he right clicked it. It looks like he right clicked it. Can he kill the Nexus? The Nexus is gonna fall. Man, Vordy is insanely aggro. Now he's coming into the 12 o'clock. Gonna try and take down this Nexus as well. He has right clicked this Nexus, but I do not think he's gonna get it. How much damage can he put down on the Nexus before he falls? Look at the minimap. More units are coming out as well, but Tama now really needs to focus on the defense. And look at the supplies. Still relatively close here. Obviously, Kratos with a bit of a supply lead, but that's a pretty typical situation. Now, the question is, is there any follow-up? He's finally getting a Queen's Nest. He's got some high random Hydras in his main base. Looks like Hydra's at the front here, but shouldn't really do too much, to be honest. And the problem is, like, these attacks look really good, but now Tama actually has his third base, and I don't think Forty can actually kill this anymore. And I would say Tama's now in a good position. All Tama really had to do was defend. Yeah, he might, he's mined out his main base. What do you think, Forty? He's got, he's got eight gateways, though. He's got his tech. He's got a pretty solid army now. He's got 2 0 upgrades still. Uh, against, I think, the still 1 0. And the thing is, before he got his fourth, but he didn't drone up too much. You can see he's just droned up a little bit. He's just adding some drones now. But Vordy made a lot of units. He actually got a pretty decent drone count, to be honest. But you can see he can't really uh, stop this base anymore. And Vordy actually, he didn't make that many lurkers. I feel like if Vordy made more lurkers this game, maybe he could have done something. But you can see he's actually not got that much gas. I guess because he still hasn't even taken his third gas right now. He's been operating on two gas pretty much the whole game. So that kind of makes sense, I guess. Meanwhile, it looks like a few random links here coming to, to kill these probes at a distance mining. A Lurker Egg block attempt on the ramp, but I think these Hydras need to just run away. They're just going to get taken down. But these three Zerglings, I wonder how many kills they actually have. The Hydras are now running away. I'm going to try and get a kill count. Three kills, two kills, one kill. So six kills. Presumably all probes between those Zerglings. More Zerglings coming in here. Vordy's going to be careful, though, because this constant aggression, it definitely is good in the early mid-game, I think. But... As the Protoss actually gets a solid army to defend this and actually gets some High Templars with Storms, I feel like this is going to be less and less effective. And Vordy's going to end up throwing away a lot of his units, so he's got to be careful. It looks like, though, while the Protoss army is distracted on the left side, he is going to send more units in here, more Hydro Ling to that mineral only. Just look at this aggro style from Vordy, but it's so funny, though, because even though it's aggro, it's not like the Eon Zerg style, just like, oh, kill him, you know, uh kill him before 10 minutes style. This is just, I mean, we're on 17 minutes right now. This is, this is solidly mid to late game already. And, uh, and this is non-stop here. It looks like Vordy has finally got his Hive. He's getting his Defile amount, so he's not going to be staying on Hydro Ling, but he's been playing like almost in pure Hydro Ling for this entire game so far. I've only seen something like three or four Lurkers uh, in total for the whole game. Oh my god, a lot of High Templars here potentially could get sniped here. One of the High Templars might die to the Storm. Yes, indeed it does. The second High Templar does fall. He isn't going to get any more here. Three High Templars, four High Templars all dying at the front. The last one also doesn't have energy. Oh man, great moves there. You can even snipe this last one here as well. The Hydras obviously are going to die. They might as well just kill the High Templar. No, they're actually just going to run away. Nice moves. However, Protoss has gotten the Mineral only now. So he's got that extra base. The Natural, I believe, yeah, the Natural is mined out. But boy, he's got to be a little bit careful because the economy situation is, is definitely not bad for, uh, for Tama. But look at the supplies, though. Tama had like a 30 supply lead for a good chunk of this game and it's now much much closer and three more links coming into the mineral only this is actually insane i'm just i don't even get a chance to stop talking here i don't even, don't even get a rest it's just infinite attack mode from uh from vordy and this dt by the way i think this is the dt that came here like super early in the game just wasn't really able to do anything nice storm there kills a lot of links but does kill the high templar as well but it looks like this base it is going to stay alive. Maybe the Lings are going after the High Templar. He's going to get another High Templar. Wait a minute. No, he can't hold on to this base. What is going on here? Where are Tama's units? Tama's going to lose another Nexus here. He's going to lose all the probes. The probes need to run. They need to run to the 12 o'clock here. And these Lings appear to have Adrenal Upgrade. Now, yeah, these are Cracklings, guys. These are Cracklings. 1-1 one, one Cracklings on the field because the Hive has finished. I don't see the first... The first of Valia, but he's losing more High Templars! He's losing so many High Templars! Ling's now coming in to the Nightbolt expansion. He's actually... It's the it's the 20 minute Ling bus timing, guys. The crackling timing. There you go, guys. 
If at first your Ling bust doesn't succeed, go for a Hive, get Cracklings, and then you can bust a natural easy peasy with your crack with your one one Cracklings. Holy moly! And the first Defiler appears to be on the field. I mean, I don't think Tama really has even had much of an opportunity to attack at all. Uh, you know, in the very early game, he did like a small Zealot attack that didn't really do anything, and then he tried to go for a Storm Drop and got denied. And that was pretty much it. Like, he still won't be able to drop here. There's still a Scourge and some Hydralisks uh, behind the natural. I'm trying to find where the units are here. Oh my god. This is like serious attrition style Zerg. I love this. This is actually so cool too, because I feel like, you know, if you wait, if you, if you allow the Perdos to really mass up, and you have, and you want to try and control like a large Zerg army, like, I, you know, I mean, I'm a Protoss player, but I'm not gonna lie, controlling a large Zerg army is definitely harder than controlling a large Protoss army, especially if you have to Storm Dodge in the mid late game. If you have like, you know, four control groups of Hydras and you're trying to Storm Dodge, it's so hard to do that. So instead, why not just keep attacking him and just keep trading away armies? Because in these smaller engagements, I feel these favor Zerg a little bit more, and it just in general makes it much easier to Storm Dodge, easier to pick off High Templar, like it's difficult for Protoss to really get his units together. And with the Dark Swarm here, in the natural, Tama could be in a lot of trouble. He's finally got some Archons on the field. These are like the first Archons I've seen. It just shows you how many High Templar have actually died this game. Because normally, you know, in, in PvZ or, or PvE, anything really, once you use your Storms on the High Templar, you morph them into Archons, and you're supposed to keep the Archons alive. Uh, for the for the uh, for the next engagements, but Tama just hasn't been able to do that. Now he's mining away from the twelve o'clock. Still no additional expansion from uh, from Vordy, who's also getting a little bit low on his main base as well. Should potentially start thinking about another base. He is actually going to try and take this mineral only, but there is a Dark Templar here to deny him. Holy moly! <clears throat> this is actually insane. Holland actually pointing out how low the supply count is. We're 20 min 22 minutes into the game, and it's barely breaking 100 supply for both of these players here. In fact, Vord in fact, Tama is actually not even over 100 supply. And look at this, another counterattack. The Protoss army is just constantly not in position. Look, he's got five Archons, but it doesn't matter if you have five Archons if you're not defending your base. Just instant kill. Look at that. Oh, and he even lifts it. Yeah. <laughs> he even lifts them into the main. Oh my god, that's gotta be so annoying for Tama. Oh my god, this is insane. Man, I can feel Tama's pain right here. This is... Oh, it's horrible. You just pick him up and just leave again. That'd be really funny. Just pick him up! No, run away! Oh, he's gonna get an Archon. No, he's not. Archons are pretty good. We have another engagement here in the middle of the map, but the thing is that... Tama actually now has a pretty good composition. The plague doesn't really do anything against Archons, right? Tama actually has a lot of Archons now, and Vordy is going mainly tier 1 units. Lurker Ling, or mainly Ling, I guess, is not good against Zealot Archon. The compositions are actually not good. 3-1 upgrades are done now against 2-2, two, two. and now it looks like we might have a bit of a base trade situation here. The Zerg army coming into the natural, the Protoss army going down for the counterattack here. There's a Dark Swarm, there's a lot of High Templar here, but it looks like they don't really have that much energy. And here we go, for the first time in this game, a major attack from Protoss here, down at the 6 o'clock base, but look at the natural, the natural is under siege by the Zerba Great Storms, by Tama, Great Storms, wait a minute, Tama might actually win this game after all, what is going on here, Tama going for the counter attack, can he kill the Hatchery, it looks like the drones have evacuated, he's trying to take down the Hatchery, Hydrolink trying to figure out what they can do, but they cannot break the ramp against the Archon High Templar here, and it doesn't even matter if they kill the Nexus, because there's nothing even left there, Great Storms again, from Tama, can he kill the hatchery? It looks like he will pick off this six o'clock hatchery. Oh my god. What is going on right now? Is Tama actually gonna win this game? I'm not even sure. It looks like the Lurker's trying to do as much damage as they can. The Lurker's doing maximum damage. The Observer getting sniped down right here. He cannot see the two Lurkers. He's gonna lose another Archon. It looks like only two Archons and a Dark Templar. 17 Archon kill for Archon. 14 kill Archon, but Tom, but Vordy is actually going to get mined out. So look at this, he's got so few minerals at his natural and his third. And Tama actually, despite having his, his bases denied for so long, is actually mining on the, the most remaining minerals on this base. But these two Lurkers are actually picking off yet another Archon. And now Vordy's running into the main base. This game is actually insane right now. Going after the Robo, but some Storm's going to deny these Zerglings. And there, another... Another Observer comes out, he's gonna kill the Nexus, but again, it doesn't matter, the, the geysers depleted, the minerals are all gone. 
Vordy needs the 6 o'clock base again. Oh my god, what is happening? Oh no, oh no, what's happening here? Two Archons actually dying here, that's pretty huge. I think, I think Thomas should have pulled those back. Holy moly, this game. Wait a minute. Any other tech going on? I don't think you can afford it. Look at this, mine out main. How often do you actually see Zerg mine out not just one, but three bases? I think before this game ends, Vordy's actually gonna mine out all three of his original bases. Look at this, this base is pretty much mined out. When was the last time you guys saw Zerg actually mine out three bases? This is, this is crazy. <laughs> Zerg pretty much never mine out any bases. Maybe their main base. But he's coming in again! He's coming in with Hydras! The 2-2 two -two Hydras! Vordy, the master of the tier 1 unit, gonna try and win this game with almost entirely just Hydras and Lings here. What an insane way to play this game. Oh my god. And again, you see, this is, this is how it works. You can do a good storm dodge. He's morphing the Lurkers in the Protoss natural expansion right now. He's retaking the 6 o'clock base. He's gonna try and bust up the ramp. It's not gonna happen. He could potentially do some off snipes here. Can he get the off snipes? He's got five, 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 five hydralis here. This is, a, this is a filer. A third ops comes out. I think he actually missed an opportunity in there to actually snipe all the ops. And there's a Dark Swarm, the Lurkers should be finishing any second now. There are the Lurkers finishing. They're gonna be a little bit careful not to borrow all together though, in case there's another High Templar. But there actually is no more High Templar. Now the Lurkers are running up the ramp here. Gonna start, gonna start sieging down these gateways. You can see the Rally Point needs to be fixed here. The Rally Point needs to be fixed. And Archon dying at the bottom of the ramp here. He's all over the gateways right now. There's a DT actually in the 6 o'clock base, I believe. A DT in the 6 o'clock base is gonna start wailing away on this hatchery. I don't know what unit he has to actually deal with that. By the way, Vordy's mined out. Vordy has no income. Look, he's mined out. He is completely mined out. He's gonna move down to the 6 o'clock, but there's a DT right now. And Vordy, Vordy's gonna lose a lot of Lurkers to the storm. And actually, the left side base is finished here. Here. Tama's not mining this yet. Tama, can he regain control of his main base? I don't even know. The drones actually killed the Dark Templar. The drones actually swarmed around the Dark Templar. Holy moly, wait a minute. I actually don't know who's gonna win anymore. Tama has a marginal supply lead. But we're 27 minutes into the game and both players are at something like 50 supply. Thanks to these drones actually killing down the DT. <laughs> They actually are able to mine from the space. He's not mining the gas here, but we are in such a low eco situation. Wait a minute, he's gonna lose a robo. Okay, wait. For, uh, Tama has one obs. He got the support bait, but I don't think he made any reavers. Some links now gonna go take down this mineral only base. But but I, if he loses this observer, he can't see lurkers anymore. He won't have any more detection. And the three three cracklings going to town. It doesn't matter if they stack on them. The, these links are just so strong against pros right now. But no, it does matter. Look at the probes murdering the 3-3 three, three cracklings. Did he even lose a probe? Oh no no, they didn't murder him. They they got they went into the overlord. What the heck? Look at this! He's microing three Zerglings. Oh my god. He's microing three Zerglings in an overlord. He's got more links coming in right now. 61 supply to 57. Can Tama hold on to this base? No, he's gonna lose the cannons right now. And remember, Tama's almost mined out the 12! This game is insane! There's one zealot here, the pylon falls! He doesn't have any units here, where are the units? He's got a bunch of zealots in the main base, why are the zealots not coming? The zealots need to come and rescue the, the Nexus! The Nexus is gonna fall! Look at how quickly the Nexus falls! I can't believe we are almost 30 minutes into the game, and the game is coming down to microing. Alright, Lings are in the main. The cat's, the cat's angry. The cat, calm down. We got we got crazy PvZ action going on right now. I can't feed you right now, all right? We gotta we gotta watch the game here. All right, don't worry. Things are still as crazy as they were before. But Tama is in serious trouble. Look at the supplies. Down to 42. He's down to 38 supply. He's got Dark Swarm in his main. We could have just unpaused in time for the GG right here. I don't think he can actually win anymore. Oh man, does he have? He's got a DT here. The magic DT. The DT will save us. He's got. Uh, 200, he's got 350 minerals or something left, or 450 minerals left to mine, and that's it. He's got to win the game. Oh, he does a storm! He, wait, is there a unit here? He needs a unit, he's on three eye Templars, he's got, where's the Dark Templar? We need the DT, boys! Where's the DT? Oh no. Oh no. Oh, we're in trouble. 
Vordy's now distance mining from the bottom left base. He's only mining from the 6 o'clock right now. DD's actually coming down here. There is an Overlord, but there's no units actually protecting the distance mining per, uh, drones, but... Excuse me, I don't think it matters. Oh man, distance mining now from the left side minerals. The DT actually gonna do some work. He's gonna run away from the crack. The Overlord's actually running away from the DT. Oh, oh, he's gonna try and run around. One more drone. Ooh, I think he got 10 drones right there, but look at the main base. The main base is in shambles. Tama's down to 20 supply. He's lost control of the main base. And GG. From the father toss, Vordy takes down game number three. What a freaking crazy game that was. Oh my god. <laughs> 600 units killed, and it was not enough, ladies and gentlemen. What a game that was. Wow.